Hey, hey guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another stream, welcome back to another video. Another video featuring this guy right here, yep, that's him, that's the 148 scale F15E by Great Wall Hobbies, which I am actually going to be building and eventually creating it as an ROKAF F15K, um, which of course is uh, Korean Air Force. And so, and young SAO to my Korean friends, thank you for watching. Um, yes, so where have we left off? We're kind of sitting with a cockpit that's about 90% done. We got it all finished up last time, and just ignore this little pile of parts here. This is for a different project I'm working on. We're focusing on our cockpit for our F 15. <clears throat> okay. So, we got it almost done. I'm just going to change camera so you can get a better view here, and then, uh, then we'll uh, start continuing, okay? So there's where we're at right now, okay? I have put one side wall on, okay? So that's done, a little piece of photo etched in the back there, okay? And that's where we're looking at, okay? All right, so, so let's continue. So, I did put the, the wall on the one side here, got the photo etch piece in there, and then I was looking at the displays on the display panels um, in here on these, and they were not, the color was just off, and not to my liking. They were all kind of a kind of the same color as my cutting mat here. Every display was like this color. Every every one. And I didn't like that. Because that's not the way they look when they're off. And this plane will be displayed sitting down. No pilots in it. The plane is off, right? And so the screens should all be basically black. Not this color. And so looking at reference photos and how they actually look it's actually kind of funny how some some screens almost have a purple tinge to them other ones have like a reddish tinge to them I guess it's all how they're backlit or whatever and what's actually going to be displayed on them I don't know I'm not a pilot um, so I'm not sure 100% why different ones are different colors when they're turned off and you can visually see that um, yeah, so I decided to go in there with uh, mixed up some paints, some like a blackish blue and one that's like a blackish red, a blackish purple, and I did each one according to the fo reference photos I found. And then after doing that, I put some to me a clear and just made them so that they look a little bit glossy. And so that's that. I'll try and show you on the camera here. Get the right angle. That's what we're looking at. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? What I'm going to do is I'll get some pictures. And I'll put pictures up like right here. And uh, <laughs> so, yeah, so that's kind of what it looks like. I actually did upload on my Instagram. If you check out my Instagram, I put a couple of photos of this thing as it sits now. Um, actually, but without this wall on. Um, and that's that. So check out my Instagram. Links down below in the description box. Check out my Instagram. You can see some still pictures of this thing. Um, as you can tell, I was airbrushing some stuff earlier. Um, <clears throat> yes, so let's move my little engine parts out of the way here. We have this little wall. This is the... I don't know if port and starboard. I think port is the right side, starboard's the le left side. I, it could be the opposite. I don't know. I never remember that. So I call it driver's side, passenger side. Because, <laughs> yeah, that's easy for me to remember. I got to put on the passenger side wall. And that's just going to go on just like that. These little tabs, they fit pretty. Oh, yeah. 
The reason why I left this one off is I wanted to show you guys. You've got two little tabs that fit in here and here, okay, into the little slots right here and right here. And they line up perfect on this side. And when you look at this particular panel, you'll see the tabs are the same. Okay, let me change the camera and I'll show you. Okay. So, tab here and a tab here. Okay. And they fit in those little slots. Those little slots being here, right here, and right here. Okay. Two little slots. And you look at this tab and, yep, perfect. Lines up. Come over to this side. Just, ah, let's drop it, why don't you? Um, just keep it like this. And the tabs do not line up at all. They are way off. If I line up the front, the back one don't line up. If I line up the back, the front one don't line up. At all. There is no alignment whatsoever. I checked on the other sprues because, as I mentioned a couple of times now, this kit has a few extra parts. And um, I figured, okay, well, maybe I've grabbed the wrong one and I need the one that's going to go here. The other one in the kit is exactly the same as this. The tabs are the same. So I have a choice. I line up the front tab or I line up the rear. And it looks like lining up the front tab puts it where I need it. The rear tab is going to have to go bye bye. We're going to have to go bye bye, bye bye. So let's just get rid of this tab, shall we? Sure, I don't cut off too much here. I'm going to clean this up. Again, be careful with a sharp knife. All right. So that tab is gone. still have an alignment point on the front. Now this fits in and now we can glue that in. So that's that. And do both types of glue. Why do both types? Because this thicker stuff dries a little slower and allows for a little more time for it to do its thing as far as melting the plastic together. As these modelers online they keep on saying how the glue isn't actual glue. The glue really is a solvent that creates a chemical reaction on the plastic, the plastic then starts to dissolve a little bit and as it as the glue dries, the plastic gets welded together. Whereas something like CA glue is an actual glue. glues the pieces together rather than having any chemical reaction to it. Now how much that's true, I don't know. I'm not a chemist. I have no idea. I'm having a bit of an alignment issue on the front here due to the photo etch getting caught on the tab. There we go. Let's glue that in. Let 
there are a few points on this where pieces of the the fitment has been so tight that they don't want to go together and you have to shave off just a little hair of a piece like this right here in order to get this to sit down From what I've seen from reviews of this kit online, that's kind of par for the course. and something to be expected. So, I'm kind of going into this with a little bit of uh, foreknowledge, expecting a little bit of, a little bit of alignment problems. And it's not so much alignment as just they have manufactured manufactured the parts with such close tolerances that they don't you know your 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 thing doesn't fit into the slot you have to either trim a little bit off that to get it to fit or you need to trim open your slot a little bit and get that to fit and that seems to be what's becoming a common thing with this kit um, case in point, these guys are our intakes. Um, they fit so tightly together that I actually had to use CA glue to, to keep it closed so that I could have it line up very nicely on the inside. The outside here, I don't care. I don't care about this little lip here, and I don't care whether it's actually perfect down, halfway down in here, you're never going to see it. Right? When you close that up and that's now dark in there, you can't see in there. You just can't, right? Can you tell? No. No, you can't. That's the way it is. So who cares? But it's things like that that are becoming more and more on this kit where it's really super tight. You guys saw me putting this together for the, the front landing gear and that those little tabs, with that thing was tight fit together there. And... Um, yeah, so, anyway, I'm kind of rambling here. Cockpit assembly is done. Finished. Flip this page over. And they want me to put the two halves of the fuselage together with the, the back wall of the radar. Okay, so we need C-32. C-32, let's find it. Is this our C tree? This might be our C tree. It is, okay. And here's our radar. Radar, I'm gonna leave it black for now. I don't need it to be painted yet. Let's uh, make sure I trim these off properly. Because these will interfere with the fitment of the fuselage halves together if you don't trim off your nubs. Okay. So, I'm going to take our two fuselage halves. these two guys here and we'll do a little test fit so we've got our little nubs here that stick out and they line up with these on both sides and it's the kind of thing where you don't want to just glue it to one side and hope it fits later you want to have it all lined up and ready and you kind of want in my there we go now we're lined up okay so there's our fit now if I could just glue this in and just leave it like that and I'm hoping for the best when it comes to putting the other half on 
But if I do it while the glue is still kind of soft and then put the other half on, that will allow me to fix any alignment problems with the actual cockpit in the fuselage that, I, that might occur. Like Now this thing actually does fit together quite nicely. Definitely better than the Academy version of this thing. Got that. I'm gonna have to hold that together. That's not a big deal. We don't have any steps going on here. That's really beautiful. The Academy kit's got a nice step that you gotta play with. Um, so let's see. With this being held together like that, do I have to put this piece in first, or does it go in after? Let's see. Which way does this orient? Looks like this. Yeah, see, it's going to have to go in. I don't think it just sits on top. Let's just do a test. Let's take this apart. Take this out. definitely just slides in there. Yeah. <laughs> Don't even really have to glue it. <laughs> it just kind of sits in there. It ain't going anywhere. Once it's in there, it's not going anywhere. It actually just goes into that little slot. That's it. It just kind of hangs out there. So, I can glue this in just like that. Okay, so I'm just going to let that sit like this just for a minute or two. Get a piece of tape here. Just to kind of hold together. Let that glue set just for a minute. I don't need it to sit for a long time. I don't need to waste any time. While that's sitting, let's see what's going on next. We gotta take our X11, that's basically the piece that goes right here. It goes like that, it's gonna go on there. Okay, we gotta put a little piece of something on there. G5, G I'm gonna guess is the clear, clear parts. Let's see, these are our, our clear parts. Yep, that's G, and we want number five. That's this guy here. Where did my fingers go? There they are. Okay. Uh, I still haven't. I haven't gotten rid of the uh, that seam line across the top of these yet. Um, I'll actually show you guys my process when it comes to that. When it comes time to do that. I'll show you guys my process and how I clean that up. Um, not that I'm an expert at it or anything, but the couple of times that I have tried, tried it and done it, it seemed to work pretty good. So I'll show you guys how I did that. This is not a very cleanly molded piece. Here to be. This is going to go that part facing down. have it molded in a weird little way that it's only going to be touching on the one edge and yet it's supposed to stick up.
almost like that. Okay. I know this is where some people freak out. You know, you're good. Using glue on a clear part, it's going to get foggy. Um, I haven't had that issue with Tamiya glue. Um, I have not encountered that problem with Tamiya glue fogging up my clear, my clear parts. So from what I can tell, that's how that's going to go. Okay. This guy here. Okay. See that angle that it's at? If I put my hand here. See that angle? That's what it looks like in the book. But I'm not sure. Just as a test, I'm going to cut this thing off of here. Off of there, and we're going to put this on here. Now, if I have the angle wrong, it's going to interfere with it. If the angle's right, yeah, my angle's way off. There's no way that would be like that in there. It's such a crazy angle. So, Making sure and keeping it straight. I get to play with it a little bit. If you play with it too much, it'll fall off. <laughs> That's that is. Or you just wind up dropping it on the floor. gotten away with it. Another little test fit. Fuck off. Pardon my language. Okay. Another test fit. Better. Much better. Okay, so let's put that there. And now that I've moved it a little bit, this glue does not like that. It basically wants to set and be done. So I'm going to use a little bit of my thin. Just add a little bit of strength to that and then let that sit. Okay. Now, this thing I've cut it, I need to trim. Now, I've got a lot of work to do on this, I've got to get rid of that seam line. But, that's not today's project, so that can just go over here. That is not for today. So this will have had enough time to set a little bit. So, let's open her up. There we go. So that's plenty fine, that's strong enough to hold it. Let's take a look. And we know that this sits on these two little nubs. So we already know that I need to glue there, but I want to see what other what other little contact points we have inside. Oh hi Mega Boy, sorry. Um got a contact point along that edge. It's probably this whole edge here. Looks like all the way to the back here. 
So that's what I'm going to glue. I'm going to put a little bit of glue along this spot and on these two points. Okay. So our two points and along this edge. And the nice thing is you don't need to be too worried about cleanliness on it. Okay, line those up. There we go. And we're in. Okay, now let's do the same thing on this side. Bing and bang. All the way along here. Now, I'm going to put some glue on the back of the radar dish so that when we get it lined up on here, it knows what to do. And now the tricky part of lining everything up. sure it all sits together. And that's a nice healthy snap. Feels good. Let's just do this to hold that together for me. I'm going to get a couple more pieces of tape so that it will be ready. This is where the extra thin helps. So you can run it in that crease. And it runs down and we rely on the capillary action of it. Finally, we got the back. Of course, this is inside, so you can be as sloppy with the glue as you want to be. So you've got a bit of a nub that right there that I did not clean up properly. Or, maybe I did, and it's just being stubborn. It's just being a little stubborn. Sometimes it's a little stubborn. I'm going to need to put a little piece of tape here to hold that. So, let's hold this together. Pull the tape nice and tight. And there we go. So we've got a little bit of a gap here, but that's not anything to really be worried about. Um, that's just kind of a, you know, when they're doing the mold, they don't have it at such a sharp, it's not a sharp mold right so it's kind of like two just slightly rounded pieces coming together like this and so you've got that little bit of a gap right across here right like that rather than it being a sharp two sharp edges being right like this so that's what that is that's what that is along here a little tiny bit of putty will clean that right up but that might not even be seen 
when you take this, put this on here, now you only got that tiny little spot, and now you take the canopy and put it across there, you don't even get, you don't even see it anymore. So, I'm not really going to complain about that. I think that my little visor thing is still up too tall. So I'm going to take this canopy piece off. Trim this down so that it will actually go on. Okay. So let's test this. We've got that sitting there. This is sitting here. And if I try to put this down, yeah, it's fine. It's perfectly fine. No problem at all. All right. I'm okay with that. All right. So, that's that. So, it's, uh, before I go and spill my glue, now we got two options for the nose cone. Okay, we can have the nose cone open or closed, depending on what you want to do here. Okay, now if I do it closed, then there's no more to do with the radar. It doesn't matter what I do in there. You're never going to see it because the nose is glued on there, right? But if I decide to have the nose open and actually display the radar, that's a whole other story. Because I'll have to assemble the two extra pieces for, well, they call it the random, um, or at least that's the color they're calling for to paint it, um, which is actually kind of a bluish green, which I actually happen to have right here. Um, this, what I've done is I mixed these two colors. Mr. Color number 57, which they call metallic blue-green, um, which looks very similar to the lid there. But I mix in some of their number 77 metallic green. I mix a little bit of this green in with this, maybe about 50-50. And I come up with a color that's just like the lid here, okay? And uh, if I take the original two, here's the original two, and that's what they look like. So this, as you can tell, is just a little bit different. It's got a little bit more green to it, okay? Because these F-15s, this color that they use in here, and like if you're uh, doing the F-15C, behind the, the cockpit, behind the pilot, you're going to have that color and it's a kind of a bluish green right and it's this is too much blue it doesn't match and this obviously is too much green so you take the two and you come up with something like this and that's really kind of the color that they are and so that's what i've got here okay i mix the two and i come up with that i will paint this part I think I'm going to have the nose closed because that's that eh, just looks better. Um, the 132nd scale, uh, the 132nd scale Tamiya plane F-15, the the C of course. Um, you can, it's the nose is actually on a hinge and you can open it and close it as you feel, and so that's really cool. And so it makes sense to actually build the the radar in there and paint it up and everything. And then you can have it with the nose closed, and then you go, oh, hey, check this out. And you go, whoop, and you open it up, and hey, look at that. There's detail in there. That's cool. This, you don't have that option. This, you're going to have either open or closed. Um, so, let's take a look at C38. That's the nose, which I think I already cut off of because they were getting in the way. No, I didn't. They are over here. 
Well, I did. I kind of cut them off. Again, why there's two? It's obviously because they give you options. This one we have 38 and 39. Um, I mean, visually to look at them, they look like the same thing. Um, but there's got to be something different for them to actually give them two different numbers. But we want 38. That's what the instructions are calling for. So there we go. 38. Okay, we'll put 39 back in the box. For me, the nose is always a bit of a challenge. It's kind of neat. They've undergated this just like a like a Bandai kit, where that nub is actually not on this surface, but on the edge. That's how it was attached. And that's a nice little treat to have that like that. So I will just clean up this edge a little bit. smooth you know what I mean smooth and it's very easy especially with a brand new exacto knife blade it's very easy to actually cut too much and well guess what you got to do you want to wind up having to use putty if you cut too much now as I said we got two little tabs here and they can go into that those two little slots whether they go in there with it like this or not, no, they get they hit. So if you're going to display the nose closed, you got to cut these little tabs off. But if you want to display it open, you can just do it like that, and it glues in together like that. All right, I'll show you on the big screen here. Okay, so you have these two little slots here and here. Okay and your tabs go there. So this basically, you're going to glue it like this and just glue it on those two little tabs. But if you wanted to close it, you're going to have to cut them off, right? You, cut, you have to cut them off in order for it to fit in there. So it's, there's no actual hinge, it's just the way it is. So I'm displaying it closed, so I'm going to be cutting them off. I'm sorry little tabs, you've got to go. It was fun while you were here. I suppose you could have the option, since this plane comes with two nose cones, you could have one and the other at the same time. So I left them kind of in there, to, it's going to be a bit of a guide for me to get this nose cone lined up perfectly. And so there we go. And I'm happy that I don't have real differential line going across here. This seems to line up nice. Let's get my nose lined up. Panel line seems to be pretty good. The seam is good. I'm happy with that. That looks good. Now, something else they mention in the instructions, which I have neglected to point out. They mention putting weight in here, here and here. They've got these little symbols of weight, like you want me to put a piece of weight here and in the front here. That tells me that this plane, the way they've designed it, That tells me that if I don't put weight in the nose, that this thing's going to want to sit on its butt. And that's possible, and that's bad. <laughs> and I hate that, because I hate the idea of having to put weights in. Now, fortunately, even though this is all closed up, if I want to put a weight in there, I could drop a bolt down in here. There's plenty of room to put a bolt down in here. There's room here to put a smaller one. I could put a smaller bolt or maybe a couple of nuts or something like that. I've got lots of nuts, you know. 
I got nuts. Want to see my nuts? I'll show you my nuts. There's my nuts. These guys here. You can always drop them in there. Doink. Just like that. Right? Now, that's the thing I hate about adding weight. Is to get that. I don't want that. I don't want to move, pick up the model and hear it rattling around. Right? Now, you could put some CA glue on there and drop it in. And then, you know, it's going to stick and stay wherever it lands. And because of the closed up nature of this, it's, well, wherever they land, they land. It wouldn't really matter. But fortunately, I can wait. It's not something I need to do right now. So let's glue our nose on, eh? Okay, let's do this. need a lot, but I want enough. Line up those tabs. And there we go. Now, the seam between the panel lines along here is perfect. It's the same amount, but up here on the top side, this is nice and super tight. This has a slightly larger gap, just a little bit. And it's only from here to here. As we get to here, it tightens up again. So is that something I'm really concerned about? Once this thing is painted, it's not really going to be make any difference. I might take some of the, my Vallejo putty and just run it in there, just to just to tighten that up a little bit, just from here to here. Because the, the Vallejo uh, white putty that's going to, um, you know, it, it's water based, and as the water dries, it tends to it tends to shrink quite a bit. Um, I can see why guys don't like to use Vallejo putty when they want to hide a seam. You know, it's like say along right along here. Like they, why they don't want to use it because it just shrinks down, and then you've got your visible line again, and you've got to do, put more on, and that shrinks down, and then the line comes back, and you put a third layer, put third layer, and you keep on piling it up, and then you go to sand it, and that stuff because it's soft. You go to sand it, and the, your sanding just rips it right out of that line. It's just, yeah, that's just why I'm starting to understand. Is that I watch um, what's his name, Will Pattison, on YouTube. I've been watching a lot of his videos, and he does a lot of like comparison videos and tutorial stuff on different chemicals and things and different paints and all these different things and I guess being a, being an engineer that he is he goes into a lot of detail which unfortunately I wind up thinking okay hurry up get on with it <laughs> but anyway I, I think I feel like I'm rambling now a little bit am I rambling I don't know I know that my chat is definitely not rambling I don't even see the black box there Nobody's in my chat today. Okay, nose is on. And that's pretty much it for this page. We got our two halves together. They want me to put this on, but I don't want to put that on, especially with that delicate little clear piece on top for that. That's going to be a, on there. I'm not touching that for a long time. This guy is going to be put aside, and uh, he's not getting put on, at least until I've got the fuselage, the back half of the plane put together. And I definitely don't need my canopy right now. I don't need the front part of the canopy right now. So, that's it for this page. Our nose is on. We're skipping ahead. 
Uh, we have our intakes, which we already have assembled and painted. And we're going to be putting these, I guess we can put this aside. I'll take a couple of pictures. I'm going to take a couple of pictures of this and put it up on my Instagram. Uh, the comparison between the cockpit on this kit and the cockpit on the Academy kit. You see the, the, the difference in the two. I think that's a neat little comparison to make. We don't need this. Um, so we need our bottom half of the back part of the fuselage. So let's dig that out. That's our, that's our little bucket piece with all the extra things in it. this guy right here with his little protective cage. It's nice that the attachment points of this cage are kind of up on the top surface and not on the sides. This particular one, it looks like it's on the side, but it's um, the way they've done it is really kind of nice. It's a nice little cage. <laughs> Let's put you over here. Let's get these cleaned up. See, the way I took these off, this is just a very thin little sliver of a nub. clean up. All right, let's get my knife and let's clean these up properly. The way they have this molded here is pretty nasty looking. It's not very clean and straight at all. Had somebody comment on my, uh, I think it was part one or part two, that said they built the 172nd scale version of this thing. And, uh, sorry, I keep forgetting to change that. They built the 172nd scale version of this and found that the fuselage was challenged to get together. So I'm hoping that's not the case for this one. Got a strange looking pieces here. A little bit of flashing cleanup here. Just a little bit of flashing there. Maybe a little bit here too. Overall, the flashing on this has been very minimal. I haven't really encountered any. Nothing serious anyway. Definitely not like an atelier kit. Atelier, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. Every atelier kit I've ever made, the, the, so much flashing to clean up and trim. It's just ridiculous. Okay, so we're looking pretty clean, pretty straight. I don't think this part's even going to be seen, because I think our lower wings rest on top of that. Anyway, so we have our little bucket, and we've got to take F2. F2, that's that little funky piece. Let's find that. There it is. That's this guy here. This guy. Is 
is what is going to be the main the main thing that keeps our two halves of the fuselage together. So he's going to be integral to this whole thing. Now, does it go front to back? Which way goes first? They do mention they got a little thing here. I'm trying to find. way that they are trying to tell me how this goes together. Ah, okay. So in our little diagram here, right here, they show these little rectangles and how one is shorter and one is longer. And that's, they're referring to these posts. Okay, so we want to have it so the longer one is at the back. Okay, this side you can distinctly see. This one goes right up to the top here, right at very almost at the very top where my finger is. And this one's got a nice big gap. And this one is actually even angled down like this. And that's the way they show it in the picture. I thought it was just that they've screwed up in their drawing, not drawing at 90 degrees. But the actual part, the thing is not 90 degrees. It's not like this, it's sitting at this angle, right? So, I just don't know, is the other side the same? It is too, it's on an angle like this. It's going down, like that. Anyway, uh, yeah. I don't know if you noticed my green finger <laughs> playing with the, mixing the paints earlier and I wound up uh, getting a little extra paint <laughs> on me. Um, okay, so, with that being said, that makes sense. They want this facing like that. just sits down on those just like that. I'm assuming when we put the other half down that that's why these things are angled down like this. It's something to do with the upper fuselage having to come down on top of that. We'll do a test fit to see if this would still fit if I had it backwards. It does fit. It's just... It actually it just fits fine. So you can put it in backwards. It is possible to put it in backwards if you make that mistake. But let's see. If I do a test fit here, that fits perfectly there. Okay, so that fits. If I pull that out of there, turn this around, now try and do it. No, it's it's gonna hit. Where is it? If I hold that down tight. No, it's it's it doesn't quite do it. It's really wanting to lift this piece up and not line up. Why am I going to great such great lengths? Because this is important to me. <laughs> I want to get this right. So it's the same kind of thing. It's just not nearly as tight. It actually fits exactly the same. So I am tempted. I think what I'm going to do I'd love to just do this and glue it on there, but that won't work. You can't get in there and do this with it. So, this glue should be cured by now. So I'm going to take this off. Put this guy on here. See the fit. The fit on here is kind of funny. When you go to put it in, it's too tall, so you have to do this.
kind of want to glue it down and then put the nose on so that it won't interfere later on. See, it, it kind of does. See how that lifts? See, when I go to pull the nose out, you'll see this thing lift. See that? It's subtle, but you see it. See how it does that? And no matter what I do, that kind of works like this, but it still wants to. It's not a, it's definitely not a perfect design. Now, how could I get, how could I eliminate that? I could trim this edge down. I could trim this down to be a little bit more of a, of an angle. I could sand it down, I could file it. That might be a good idea. I could cut a little notch in this. I could cut a notch on the top so that gives me that extra little leverage to get in there at that angle. I could do a combination of both. Let's start with filing this down. Why, why go to this kind of trouble? Because it's preemptive. There may be guys out there who put this thing together and say, I never had a problem with that. I don't know why you're worrying about it so much. Well, I'm worrying about it because I don't want any problems later. I want it to go together really easily. Okay, so I've shaved that down just a little bit. Obviously, not very much. Okay. Shaved, shaved off a little edge there. And now, here's my knife. On this front edge, I'm going to trim this out. Just that much. But realistically, I'm only taking a couple millimeters of material off of here because I don't want to lose any integrity on it. This could be a very, a very important part of holding the fuselage. So I don't want to take too much off of this. So just shave some off. Okay, there we go. So just a little bit. Like I said, I haven't taken a whole lot off, just that little bit there. So that comes in and this thing wants to come in at an angle that alone that alone has done a lot to just doing that little bit I'm going to do a little bit more I think I can maybe just across the top here just to eliminate all
Okay. Let's try this. Much nicer. And that's going to let me slide that in there without any resistance. Maybe just barely, but it's not going to be any that's wanting it to lift. Can I still lift it? Yeah, just just that tiny it lift. I can lift it a millimeter, but I can also put it in there without lifting. So that's what I wanted to do. I'm happy gluing that in there now. I am very happy to glue that in just like it is. <laughs> Are you really? Well, yes and no. Now I'll be happy to glue it in there. <laughs> All right, and we're glued in. There we go. Okay. So with that done, we got our intakes. intakes go in there's a left and a right and it's going to be fairly easy which one's right and which one's left we've got little pegs down at the bottom for these to go in it's only going to go one way because of the orientation of the lower fuselage and obviously that ain't right that boy ain't right there we go and there do we go get in there? I don't know. All the way down on the bottom that should fit all the way down. Just like so. Like that. Okay. Okay. Well, it's a tight fit. <laughs> That's a very tight fit. So tight I can't get it back up. Oh no, you can't get it up? <laughs> That's a big problem. So they got little blue pills for that. There we go. Okay, so I'll put some glue here and here, and we'll glue it in. And I think we're going to be done after this for today. Yeah, it's tight. As you put this down, this it's spreads this open a little bit. It spreads the fuselage open. Test fit this side. There and there. And that one slid in nicely. So. Glue and glue. done and done. Now if you wanted a little added support you could glue a little bit more around this edge instead of just on those little pegs. I don't think it'd really make much of a difference. The next thing they'd have me do is drill out a bunch of holes. And they would have me do it before putting these in, so I gotta rip these out now. Ah. What's the problem? Reading left to right? You're doing this first, and then all of a sudden there's holes you need to drill. <laughs> so that sucks. I hate when I glue something in then I gotta pull it out right away. Because we got holes to drill. We've got to drill these little holes out underneath here. They don't tell me what size bits to use, so I'm just gonna have to choose bits that match these little notches.
we've got ones to drill out back here also. Oh no, just this one here in the middle. And this one here in the middle. <laughs> Let's see, do you match? Too big. That means you're way too big. You? Mm, pretty good. Your possibility. You're too big. What about here? Too small. Perfect. I need even smaller ones. Do I have any drilling in the back there? They don't mention anything to drill these. So probably don't. This is just perfect for this. Okay. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's start with number two. Again, don't put your finger like this. Don't line it up with your drill bit. What I like to do is put two fingers I'll on each side so that when the bit comes through, it's in between my fingers, just like that. Okay? Sometimes you don't even have to. In this case, the plastic is pretty thin, and so my drill bit's going through with very light pressure and not taking very long at all. those. I have this one. These are obviously going to be for the fuel tank. And then this big guy. So I want to change bits for him. Actually, he was good for this one. this guy. He's pretty big. It's almost this size. Actually, it is that size. <laughs> How about that? Okay. Okay, so I'm just going to clean up my little burrs here, very lightly with the X-Acto knife and just twirl it around like that to make sure my holes are all nice and big. Last thing, the one thing I hate is you drill out a hole and it's too small, and you go to put your your peg in there or whatever it is, and you've got glue on it and stuff, and you're all ready, and you go to put it in, and the hole is too small. I would rather have a slightly larger hole have a little bit of play in the fitment when you're gluing it than have a hole that's too small and you wind up having to cut the peg off or something like that. <sighs> okay, let's get to gluing these things back in and then we'll call it a day. My 
this thing has kind of come apart on me a little bit on the sides because of the pressure on it. But it's not the end of the world. It's still held together at each end. I actually have this held together with CA glue here. So that's not going to be an issue. It's not going to come apart on me, let's put it that way. Just because I'm going to do that. is a tight fit for some reason. I don't know why. Okay, there we go. Now the intakes are in, and that's that. <laughs> okay, so this is where I'm going to have to call it, I think. Um, yeah. This is where i got to call it for the day. Next time we're going to be putting on our the lower wings. Uh, sections on each half of this. That's what this is all about here. And actually using some photo etch to put on the sides here for the, uh, what do they call those things? Marker lights, I guess? Um, yeah, anyway, that's going to be next. That'll be next time. And uh, putting on some uh, control surfaces and getting to those intake no nozzles, those famous F-15 nozzles. Okay, that's where we are for today. And uh, yeah, that's uh, not too bad. A little bit of a, a little bit of a headache here with the intakes, but that's not that's not their fault. That's my fault. And uh, yeah, so looks pretty good. It's kind of interesting. Usually you get to this part and you put your fans on and that's it. But as we already know, the engines are complete on this guy. And uh, But I'm not putting those engines in. I'm going to put these in and they're going to go in right there. So it's not really complete engines on these, but close. <laughs> anyway, that's that. So that's where I'm going to end it, you guys. Like I said, I'm going to take... Uh, I'll take a couple of pictures uh, and post it on Instagram, the comparison between this cockpit and the Academy one. And you can check me out there. If you're watching on YouTube, obviously I'm going to ask you to hit that like button and subscribe. And I already know that more than 80% of you guys that watch my videos are not subscribed. So come on, just, just do it. Just subscribe. Come on, guys. Uh, please. And uh, head over to my Twitch and follow me on Twitch and uh, you can talk to me live um, when I do this stuff. I know a lot of you guys are on a whole nother part of the world and uh, your time zones are way different than mine, but yeah, why not, right? Maybe it's your dinner time and you sit down and watch me do my thing. <laughs> I don't know, whatever. Um, so again, once again, this is where I'm gonna end it here. Hit the like button, hit subscribe, check out the links down in the description box below 
and we'll see you all in the next one.